Namaste, my dear brothers and sisters. The love and blessings of the Mother and Sri Aurobindo to all of you from Sri Aurobindo Ashram Delhi branch. In uh, today's edition of uh, Yes Talks, we have with us uh, Dr. Sri Vidya, whom I have had the pleasure of uh, knowing for uh, more than 20 years. Uh, she is uh, a post. Uh, she is a postgraduate and a doctor uh, and has a doctoral degree in organizational behavior. So the qualification, she's a psychologist and uh, specialized in organizational behavior. So she has worked with the, the corporate sector, counseled people there. Then she has worked with the uh, uh, college students. She has taught them. And uh, being a psychologist, uh, she started uh, taking a little deeper interest into their uh, uh, problems, why they were not interested in studies if they were not. And then she has taught in a school where she found how the children in senior classes were confused about career choices and how in some, uh, in many cases, the parents and the envi environment were compounding that problem. So she has a wide experience and after seeing all this, she finally decided to uh, counsel those uh, children, their parents who are having difficulties because of uh, uh, not being able to make a proper career choice. And also, she counsels those who have chosen a career, but after a few years, they get frustrated and want to change. So she helps them make a transition to something that may be more satisfying, more meaningful for them. So with all this varied experience, uh, she is perhaps one of the best people to tell us uh, about uh, this uh, major social issue that uh, so many of us are facing today of uh, the children, not being able to find a proper career, especially because there is a substantial increase in the number of these youngsters who are not only looking upon the career as a way of making a living, but they want to combine it with make, having a meaningful life. So with this background, I hand over to Sri Vidya, who is sometimes in short is just called Vidya, and whose organization which he has set up is Life Vidya. So I'm happy to pass on this session to her. Over to you, Vidya. Thank you, Dr. Bijlani. Thank you, Aditi. And a very warm good evening to all our guests here. So thank you for joining because it's a privilege to be able to speak to people. And um, I'm deeply honored, Dr. Bijlani and Aditi, for your invitation to join and help me, help me showcase and also talk about my experiences. So yes, Dr. Bijlani has spoken a lot. I mean, I don't... Uh, I think he's very, very kind. It's it's just a journey that we're all going through. And uh, my work is basically emanating from my own life experiences and journey. And that's why probably the name Life Vidya ticked for me. So um, I will, when we're talking of careers and we're talking of lives and we're trying to, all of us, live fulfilling lives, wherein we have careers that are meaningful, careers that help us feel successful, and as parents, and I'm a parent of uh, one tween and a teenager herself, and so I totally empathize with this journey that parents also go through in terms of helping their children build careers which are aligned or which are which they think will help the next generation be successful. So there's so much that we've seen in the last so many years, and uh, as an educator, so many times when I would teach. Like, of course, because I'm a psychologist, or most of my sessions would be in psychology. Sometimes I would do generic topics. And very often I would come across students at the senior classes, senior levels, postgraduate levels, sometimes sitting and um, looking rather disgruntled and bored. And I would wonder, oh my God, is it me? Am I not making sense? And I remember plucking the courage and asking one student, and this was back in Singapore, and I said, was the class so boring? Why do you look so disgruntled? And um, she told me, it's not you. I don't like psychology. I wanted to be a wildlife photographer, but my parents wouldn't hear of it. So most of the time in my sessions, and we would have workshops, she would sit literally buried in her books and try and ignore what is happening in the class as much as possible. And that's how three, four years of her undergraduate degree went. Rather sad, I thought. And I found the same situation here in India. And I think growing up, 
a lot of us have faced similar challenges trying to settle in careers, so to speak. So I do have a presentation. The topic is very vast, but I'll try to anchor it on a few points, which I think will be useful for us to get started on this topic. And um, at all points in time, if there is something, please pause me. I'd be happy to answer questions. Otherwise, I will be leaving time interspersed along the session so we can engage and interact. And I'd be happy to have you put in your comments or anything on the chat box. So with your permission, I'll share my screen and uh, we'll get started. Yeah. So, um, of course, today's, today's discussion is a lot about my experience and journey. And uh, each of us has different experiences. I can own my journey and experience and I can share it. So you take whatever learnings seem relevant for you. This is not the buy at all and nor is it black and white. Each of us live in a certain context and depending upon the people we work with and our own life experiences, we mold and we make inferences. So just, just to share that this is my journey and my experience and I own it. And uh, I would love to share it because I found that it mirrors with a lot of people that I work with. And I've now worked with hundreds of students over the past few years and professionals. And uh, I found that there are times when we are able to kind of help them anchor themselves and get that insight which, which they were looking for. So um, let me start with, of course, I started with telling you a little bit about myself and Dr. Bijnali also gave me such a glorious introduction. So um, the reason actually, apart from all these teaching experiences, there was a trigger which actually pushed me to work in this area. And it was about five years back when I was teaching in a private institution and uh, I was teaching the last semester children, students, and they needed to plan their careers. They needed a lot of help in helping them prepare for the interview, doing their career planning, what they wanted to do. So I was supposed to meet like about 420 students over a period of six months. And they were all uh, pursuing computer sciences. Now, what happened to me in this journey is that I understood the challenges that this group of youth of 400 odd students faced. And in that process, I started to reflect a lot. So to just give you a glimpse, out of these 420 or 450 odd students, in my first couple of sessions with each one of them, I had almost zero attendance. And then I started to linger around and figure out as to what was happening. Why aren't they turning up? And some of them, I managed to speak to them, I managed to talk to them, and they said that, ma'am, these classes have never been very useful for us, behavioral sciences, so we never turned up. So my first task was to bring them to class. And there was some drama in that also. You see, students being students, they resisted. Then they came on board and we started to have a lot of fun and we started to engage. And then I realized that they are a very disgruntled lot. Most of them didn't want to take up computer science as a career. And this being their last semester, they, they couldn't see a future which was bright. And me taking up areas of careers and planning, they found it very, very threatening because they had to face reality. They had to face the fact that tomorrow they're gonna to have to find a job and they don't want a job. So to give you some statistics, out of about 420, there were just 30 or 40 kids who actually wanted to pursue computer science. So why were the rest of them there? Some of them didn't know what to do. Some of them took it up because um, it just seemed like a good thing to be doing. Everybody is doing it, so why not me? So they started to do it. Some of them decided that jobs are plenty. So kush na kush to mili jayega. Let's just do this. And then there was this girl who told me I actually wanted to be an air hostess. But my parents told me you do this course somehow. And after four years, you do whatever you want. Now she knew that if she went back to her town after four years, which is when she was completing the degree, she's definitely going to get married. So she was dreading everything. So yes, I found that 
it was a hard hitting reality for me if we have youth who are pursuing courses that they don't like we have parents who are paying for courses that their children don't want to study and this is the time of their life when they are going to make the most of it learn the most and probably it paves the path or sets the big foundation for what they're going to do ahead and if they are disgruntled they are frustrated they are unwilling to learn we had a problem and this i first thought that okay you know this is college level let me go teach at school maybe i can figure it out earlier school mein bhi nahi hua that's how my journey to the school happened and then i decided to move in to doing it on my own and i set up life with there and um, over the past few years i have found out that there are certain parameters that drive or decide how predominantly many of us choose careers so i'll share my screen again and i'll take you through each of these bit by bit and share a few experiences as we talk along and uh, yeah so let me just proceed this so one of them of course and i think this goes undebated even for me and for a lot of us one of the primary factors is what is the family want or what do the parents want the child to do and i think i covered this in my last piece about computer science and it's not just computer science it's many many professions like in the beginning of this year i remember i was working with this family of doctors and the father had a hospital it was in one of the areas the smaller towns in the western side of india and he had a hospital which his father had set up so he was very keen that his children take up medicine so they have this legacy they have this network they have the benefit of a career which has been well established the children weren't interested in medicine so there was a lot of turmoil and it turned out to be that the father was very keen that they take up medicine now in this particular case the mother came up came up to me and we found different ways of uh, talking and discussing and with the daughter i mean there were two kids it became pretty clear that she was actually keen on psychology so somewhere they realized that maybe we will let her have her own clinic inside the hospital because they still wanted her within the confines so family yes we grow up a lot of our identity is derived from families if you have a family of lawyers then or doctors or engineers all our conversations that are happening at home technically gear us towards that career so family plays a huge role and sometimes what the family wants and what the child wants matches and sometimes it doesn't and in places where it doesn't is where a lot of turmoil and a lot of stress starts happening also the challenge is that when families decide what their children should be taking up in this changing world you know where careers are not as static as they used to be the awareness of what is happening in the recent times is um, not always bang on or in tune with the changes and hence even though the family is well meaning and wanting the best the information or the or the persuasion is probably not always encouraging or aligned with what the child wants so i've noticed that families can play a role and sometimes it can be very productive and sometimes it can be quite disruptive for what a student really wants so family is of course a prime factor and the other one that i've noticed if it's not family it's peers you see teenagers are at that stage of life even in psychology there's a whole process of moving away from the family identity to having a social identity of your own so peers are most affected by uh, uh, teenagers are most affected by what their peers are doing so if the course that i'm taking as a teenager is not considered cool by my uh, friends then i i will hesitate to take it i mean i remember one of the girls i was speaking to she said i wanted to take humanities and uh, she was talking to a bunch of her friends and the girl who was next to her retorted humanities lekar kya karegi air hostess banegi kya kar sakti hai uske sath and you see the fact of the matter is that peers are at the same level as the student they don't know that much more but peers have a huge role to play there's also a situation wherein i know there's a student who's doing a post graduation in engineering and 
from day one he knew he didn't want to do engineering but all his friends were doing it so he's doing it he's not enjoying it he's going through a few mental health issues and his parents are really struggling but they realize that the peers in his life have a far more outweighing influence than anybody else and that's a painful experience for this particular boy and we wish him well but we 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 need to kind of help our teenagers understand that peers are there they are important but when you start growing into your work life your peers may not be there for you all through they are here in school they may be there in college but once you start an office or you start working your peers are not the most predominant part of your life and that's something that's a vision that they don't quite have at that point in time so peers is number 2 in the third one i could have put it first also money there are times when i meet uh, parents and children who will say i'm forget everything else just tell us what will give us money what is something that is going to make my life very easy in fact i remember meeting this uh, lady and she's a friend of mine and uh, they are they have a thriving legal practice and her son didn't want to be a lawyer but you see they are used to a very very indulgent lifestyle uh, the son is also used to a very indulgent lifestyle and she says kuch bhi karke i have to counsel him to become a lawyer because he has to take on this legal practice from us and this gives us a lot of money we spoke a little bit more and uh, she is a lawyer by herself but she has taken a sabbatical and never got back to work i asked her why didn't you get back she said it's too stressful i can't handle it such such small small cases people are almost throwing at each other i can't understand i wonder how my husband does it and she had the answer to her question of is only money important because she can see the stress that her husband is going through money is important but where in the scheme of things do we put it and what is the emphasis that we give on it will differ from person to person but this just becomes an overriding factor for everybody and especially for students who see money as the parameter for success and why only students i would say most of our family neighbors our whole competition with the jonases it starts very young usne naya phone liya mere ko bhi lena hai usne naya bag liya mere ko bhi lena hai my neighbor has a new tv and hence i want the same brand so there is this competition which is based on lifestyle and money and we end up feeling that money has to be a key driver or what is it that's lucrative has to be a key driver for our careers and it is a parameter it's an important parameter and it needs to be seen with its uh, due diligence or significance apart from this and this is something that we've gone back and forth in i mean if we go back to our times like my parents times or the people who started there work life when in the 1970s probably if you notice people didn't switch jobs they did their degrees and then they joined and pretty much they were in one job for life and that's how they lived there was so much stability and they loved it and they had their own office family literally there was a social support network and then came all of us who started to work in the 90s and i guess many parents here would also be there we started working and within 3 4 5 maybe 7 years we started to switch and our parents would tell us what are you doing what are you doing you should not be switching be stable some of our parents told us that the point being that being in one location indicated stability which indicated that you would have a good lifestyle good peers and decent money but the whole paradigm of careers had shifted in the 90s and being in one job forever started to be seen as possibly not enough competence in fact i remember meeting a friend about 2 weeks back and he told me i've been in this organization for the past 15 years i said wow you must be doing well there he said yeah or maybe i haven't found anything better and i was like okay <laughs> that's not the best perspective but what i'm trying to say is our notions of stability are different so what inherently we are experiencing is that the way we choose careers the way we evaluate careers are based on the environmental realities of our times as parents and the current challenges or the future challenges that students and teenagers are going to face is something that we cannot envision 
we are not sure of and we feel more secure in basing it on our own parameters because those worked for us how many of you feel that these four parameters family peers money and stability are critical in choosing a career i'd love to hear from you just say yes or whatever on the chat box cuz i would like to know if i'm making any sense out here yeah just if if money okay i'll share the screen again money family peers and stability you can just type why in the chat box i like engagement please 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 yeah thank you family and stability thank you ramita that helps anybody else just look at this list and yes amrita yeah shyan thank you all four okay okay money and peers yeah for some of us it's money and peers yeah so these are the factors that come up and if you really look at it thank you for your responses that really helps so if you really look at it some careers provide you a lot of stability and some don't the psu versus private organization conundrum that a lot of people have and some people feel like i remember co coaching this person who is in a very stable job for the past 10 years and he's saying but ma'am i'm not growing but if he were to switch then he doesn't want to give up his security so i said you have to look at what your priorities are you won't get everything in everything and that's very important so apart from these a few other parameters that i found and i'm going to share them all together because they are really offshoots of this is we really want to stay with the crowd because we feel secure in what is mainstream so if someone says hey i want to do something maybe become a writer and everybody will say hey but very few people who are writers become successful or they'll say okay how can you become a singer there are very few ar rehmans or you know people who do artistic work what is considered mainstream is engineering medicine law ca in fact i remember a dad spoke to me a few months back and he is uh, working in a public sector organization and he's an engineer he must be in a very senior position there and he wanted to know from me i mean his daughter is doing engineering and he's quite happy because what he said is ma'am i'm a family of engineers everybody in my family is an engineer i only know about engineering i want my children to become engineers so that i can coach them otherwise what will i coach them my daughter has agreed she's doing her engineering now i can help her but my son he doesn't like maths or physics so i don't see him being able to do this so what should he do should he take up humanities or should he become a lawyer now if he had asked me this question i could have even you know tried to engage with him he said ma'am i think agar hum engineering nahi karte hain medical nahi karte hain to bas law hi bacha hai baki sab to professions nahi hai so and then he asked me to do law what is the subject that he should take does he have to take sciences i said no it's good enough if he takes humanities if that's what he likes but please do see as to what he likes and what he wants to do and if you want to have that conversation with me and engage me for that further i'd be happy to chat i never heard from that father after that if he were one of them i would feel okay there are so many more there are so many more and you see that's the conundrum that teenagers face and that's the stress that happens in families when people turn about 14 15 and then it becomes this issue of how fast are you growing are you working for a good brand so i'm currently working with this um, 30 plus year old gentleman very soft spoken very talented but has had a very tough time in the last 3 4 years with careers and um, this is what happened with him in his uh, senior schooling he didn't want to take sciences but his parents told him maximum options will be open so he took up pcm then maximum options are open if you do engineering he hated engineering but he did it he did electronics and communication also because he didn't want to confront them he didn't want to tell if not engineering he didn't know what so what do you do right children also don't want to become rebellious unnecessarily 
But the good thing is that once he finished his engineering, he got a placement that he really enjoyed. He was in a software firm. He loved coding. In the first two, three years of his job, he really enjoyed himself. And then pop came the mother's call saying, Beta, what are you doing? You need to grow faster. Now that you've done your MBA engineering and you've worked for two, three years, please do an MBA. So then he said, okay. And then he gave his NG, uh, MBA interest. Very bright kid, got into one of the best institutes in India. Now where's where the problem started? Because his profile changed to a non-tech role post uh, his master's in business administration. And he's a very technical guy. He had to start doing a role after his MBA, which he really didn't enjoy. And why did this happen? It happened because of the mindset that the mainstream maximum jobs are engineering plus MBA, the magical combination that a lot of us aspire for. Why? Because it provides maximum number of jobs. Now, if this were to align with what his skill sets are and what he wants to do, it's a wonderful combination. And I still tell him, you know, you're getting so many offers. It means that there is a wonderful combination. It's just that you have to start finding your happiness and joy in life too. So we're going to work on that because that's the important part of this piece. So growth, growth and brand. This becomes a very important factor. And repeatedly in my conversations with parents, students, teenagers, I see this. If I don't see it in the parents, like the student who's taken up computer science because his peers are doing it, he comes from a family of extremely good chefs who work in five-star hotels. Very different for that particular generation. But you see, he is influenced by his peers. So we have, we have a whole host of forces that are acting on us. And this is our conditioning. We've grown up to think this way. Our children are growing up to think this way. And it's all of this that starts playing in our minds Sometimes pretty much unconsciously, we're not even aware of these factors. And this is how we end up choosing the courses that we are doing, choosing the jobs, and choosing different aspects. And here is where the psychologist in me started to kick in and wonder, is this going right? Is this what is going to help a student or a person. And the real disconnect I felt here is that if you were to look at all these factors, peers, family, brand, money, growth, stability, mainstream, none of these are centered or controlled or emanate or originate from the individual really. Of course, parts of the family and the peer identity you take on, but as an individual, you can't decide individually, whether this particular organization or this particular sector will have a good brand or will be mainstream or will grow fast. So here's where I started to feel was the real disconnect that <clears throat> while it's the individual who's to choose the career, study the course, graduate, grow, work hard, and make a successful career, all the factors that go into choosing that career are not based in the crux of the individual. And this was what I started to work on. And I started to feel that maybe this is our disconnect because we are reaching out, like you go to a grocery store and you say, yeah, 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 this looks good, this looks good, but you don't know what you need. You don't know what you want. And essentially, my whole feeling and my whole experience is that we need to start with choosing careers by first centering yourself on who you are, what your skills are, what your strengths are, what is it that you like to do, what brings you joy, and then start the alignment process with what the career could be. So let me give you a few more snips because I really want to share this with you. This was, of course, what happens before. So I feel, and I have seen this work now, that when we are choosing careers, let's not start with what is lying outside or what careers are available outside. First, let's focus on 
who is the individual so if you're a parent then what is your child good at what is he or she enjoy what is the person pick on when you do not leave them with a specific task to do and there are no gadgets available that's a caveat that i need to put in put in because most of us just tend to take to a gadget when we are free and that doesn't reflect who we are do we like to work in the outdoors do we like animals are we people who want to keep physically fit is there a fitness or health quotient do we want to serve do we want to work with machines do we do design are we artistic are we into beauty i mean there are so many different facets god has been so kind and blessed each of us with so many talents and if you see each person has so many talents which is goes completely hidden after grade 7 or 8 because we are so bent on sending them for classes and coaching sometimes and not all of us but so often so many institutions all the competition all the noise that is there in the market says get them started on the competitive and coaching track early it's helpful if that's what they want to do but probably those are also the years to kind of reflect and think and see as to what is it that they want to do what is it that they give them that gives them happiness and here's where the piece from psychology comes in and the terms of course are used very loosely i use it much more in context for an individual things like personality what is it that keeps you interested what are your skills or strengths and what is it that motivates you what makes you want to get up every morning and say hey i want to do this this is a meaningful piece of chunk of work for me and i suggest that we first focus on ourselves and then say okay this is who i am which are the careers that want to utilize my talent so which are the careers where i can choose based on this talent so i remember interviewing a um, a researcher a life sciences researcher who is now heading the business development of a large uh, pharma company and genetics and they're coming up with a very very niche strain of medicines for people with special abilities and she says you know i figured i want to do this when i looked inside the microscope and i saw a cell undergo mitosis and when i saw that i was so amazed at nature and the beauty of nature and what happens within and that happened to her in grade 9 or 10 and that was it that was the joy moment for her she was able to capture it and she went on to do a doctorate in life sciences and she is she is doing very well so if we can see what these joy moments are for us there's one more child who i coached recently and I'm so glad she kind of realigned and brought herself to something that she really enjoys. So she was a miserable person when she met me uh, two years back. She had joined what is called a dummy school, was going through coaching for uh, engineering, and those coaching institutions are very competitive because that's what they need to produce. They need to produce ranks and results, and the parents had paid up a huge amount. and it was amidst covid so there were no other friendly interactions and the girl was a mess because every day she would get results on those mock tests that told her that you are no good you are no good she was really hitting at her self esteem and i had a father who called me saying that i really need help i don't want to subject my daughter to this but i don't know what she wants to do and we started to work with her and uh, bit by bit we found that she actually has a huge inclination in art and design and then i remember this one time where i asked her beta when was the last time you picked up a paint brush or charcoal and she said yaad hi nahi hai wo to shayad 6th 7th mein chhut gaya uske baad padhai ka itna pressure aa gaya ki maine to chhod hi diya parents ne bhi bola isme abhi time mat bitao she is not the only one there's somebody who was 30 post the best institute in india struggling in his job and struggling in his relationships you see job sometimes for professionals is not just the reason that they come to you and if i were to trace back he told me that 
from grade eight onwards, my life was dedicated to clearing this entrance exam. School, come back home, coaching, practice, homework, sleep. He said, so all my friends I lost because I started to see them as competition. So I, he doesn't have friends. And he chose this career. He spent five years, six years getting his degree. He got a beautiful job, is earning very well. But now he's not happy because there are a lot of things that are not going well in that industry. And AI is taking over a lot of jobs, even in tech. And that is the reality of the situation. And he says that I'm not enjoying this. So we had to rejig a lot of things. So I feel that if around grade eight, nine, we still allow them time to of course follow their routine, but also look into who they are and what they want to be. And where do they thrive? Where do you see them smiling? Where do you see them doing something which makes them feel happy without, you know, without a, a grade or somebody else saying, okay, I'll take you out or I'll buy you a treat. So, I, I started to dwell more into this. I've also written a lot on this and I've also shared it. So, I mean, because this is this forum wherein we have people who are so spiritually elevated. I found this, which is what the mother says that essentially there is but one single true reason for living. It is to know oneself. We are here to learn, to learn what we are, why we are here and what we have to do. And if we don't know that, our life is altogether empty. And that's why I say that it's joy and alignment in careers and life. Because for me, they are not two separate things. If we are working in a job for 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours in a day, so many hours in a week, so many years in your life, how can you say your career and life is separate? I found these these things that I was fed when I was a youngster, keep your career and life separate, all very strange. And it's been a journey for me to kind of rejig that and pick it up and share it differently. So I hope in that journey, people, youth, and whoever I'm working them benefit. So the question then becomes, how do you know what you want to do? How do you know what career to choose? So I would say sit down, in the non-hurried mode and write down what all interests you from the time you were three or four, from the time your child was three or four. See, what all did they do? Did they play with blocks? Did they break machines? Maybe they are engineers. Did they play with blocks? Did they build things together? Maybe they are architects. I'm not trying to simplify it. I'm just saying there are clues. And there are clues in everyday life. Did they sit and watch the gardener water plants and do things? That means maybe they have some interest, keen interest in botany. So see what interests them or see what interests you. And definitely, what are you good at? It's not just good for that researcher friend to see that mitosis. She also needs to be a good researcher. She also needs to be a keen observer. She also needs to be able to put in long number of hours in research and that metal that you need to do research. So you need to be good at it. And you will know, you know, schools do help in helping you identify what you're good at. Parents also do. And sometimes people will tell you, it's just that we don't acknowledge it if it's not considered mainstream. Just like, just like this child who was so good at art, but it was never acknowledged as a talent which she could kind of culminate into a career later. So by the way, that girl, she's joining a design school next week, one of the best in India. So she's kind of worked her way through. So I feel there is, there is a lot we can do to help. And there's a lot we can do to help students make meaningful careers. And this is a question that I really love because I find this has a lot of clues. What are you doing when you forget time and get very involved? Now, sometimes parents tell me, a gadget a YouTube channel, please try to remove the gadgetry and then answer this question. Please realize those gadgets were made so that your mind gets drawn to them. 
And that's a different piece altogether. We can't tackle it within the 40 minutes or one hour that I have here. And who are your role models? Why am I saying this? If you appreciate them, that means you value something that they are doing or contributing. So if you can see your career as an amalgamation of what interests you, what you're good at, and what you can offer to society as a product or service, then you find more joy because you're actually aligning who you are with what society needs. And that becomes a career because you do it for a monetary remuneration. And that's the piece that I really try to emphasize on. And here's a question that uh, Dr. Bijlani shared with me a few days back, and here it is. What is something you will pay to be allowed to do? So this 30 plus old person I was coaching, he says, you know, I used to love playing football. And if today also somebody tells me that become a football coach, I'm just gonna go and pay and get my license. His interest in the game is so high. So is there something, cause you are going to pay by the way, you are gonna spend five, six years studying and a lot of money getting that course there. So if you're gonna to pay to do it and you're gonna love it, then great, I think that's, that's a great career to make. So yeah, these are the reflective pointers. And yes, this is very important because a lot of people tell me, yes, sab to it's theory, uh, paisa nahi aata hai. So yes, all of this will make sense only if you're willing to balance who you are with what the world needs. This is very important. If somebody says, I want to make a lot of money and they get into investment banking and they make a lot of money, but they are not happy with that. That means they have refused to balance who they are with what the world needs. And this is a lot of the problem of frustration, psychosomatic diseases that we are seeing in our generation. Because we used a template that was environmental without seeking within. And this is, this is my experience and learning that I'm sharing. It's not something which is written in stone. So yeah, that's where we are. So yeah, some things, please read. The more you read, the more you get to know about careers. And for students, just understand and shortlist what appeals to you. And you know, also understand what is the lifestyle. If somebody tells me, I want to be a stylist, and there was a girl who came to me and she says, I want to be a fashion stylist. She has to understand what is the lifestyle of a fashion stylist. You are working behind probably icons and you're trying to do their image management and consulting. You do not have the glamour. You are giving them the glamour. You have to understand that. And you need to be available at all hours and times. So when people pick up a particular role because they feel it's glamorous, but they don't understand what goes beneath the scenes, a lot of noise starts happening. And of course, um, for parents and for children, just keep communication lines active and open because if there are conversations, yes, there will be some ups and downs, but it helps if you are open and if you are reading, because with reading, you open your horizons and you understand what's happening currently. And then you start reviewing courses and colleges. So first become aware, then understand what appeals to you. I talked a lot about that, then understand what is the lifestyle or what is that that, that professional goes through. Talk, communicate, and then zero down to colleges and courses. Yeah, this is all that you know. I um, had to share and uh, I'm stopping the share screen. I do have a book and things which I have written for more information, but I think I'd love to hear um, from those of you who've been listening so patiently <laughs> to everything that I've been wondering that I'd love to hear and uh, love to ask or understand your perspectives. And uh, Ramita says, um, I feel growing in an organization depends on one's own attitude, not the organization. Yes, Ramita, I agree. There's a lot that the attitude of the person determines. The organization culture also has a role to play. The boss also has a role to play. The structure of the organization also has a role to play. And some organizations or some industries, because there's a lot of growth happening in that sector, people grow faster in that sector. But having said that, yes, a lot is centered on the individual. 
Okay, thank you, Amrita. I'm so glad you found it useful. Thank you for putting that message in the chat box. Yeah, questions, anybody? I'd be happy to uh, answer or even comments, anything. Namaste. Namaste, Ji. Uh, the subject uh, that you spoke about is very important one for the large number of students that uh, flood our colleges. Now, the type of uh, counseling that uh, you are suggesting is hardly available to all of them. This is the dilemma that uh, there are large numbers of students they want a proper counseling and a proper career guide guidance, but they don't have access to it. There is no arrangement to have it. So their mindset is a government job is good job. See, it is not tied to their uh, real internal ambitions. So what do you find is this, uh, what do you feel is the solution to this uh, uh, gigantic problem all over India? I'm just to add to that. Good evening. My name is Shyan. I've just completed my 12th, uh, 12th board exams and I'm waiting to give my Delhi University entrance exams too. Uh, adding to what Sir just mentioned, I also had been taking career counseling previously. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, even though, I mean, to be very honest, I was pretty clear with what I want to do. My father and, you know, some of my relatives suggested that, you know, go ahead with career counseling because, you know, maybe there was a point I was feeling a bit of a dilemma and I was feeling that, okay, if not this, then what? Because, you know, what had happened is that from class, sort of class 10, 9, I had decided I want to, you know, do humanities, take up political science and all. And, you know, I had always thought of, you know, doing political science, but, you know, there did come a point where I was like, okay, if not political science, then what? So I was very confused with that and what colleges should I take? And I did, uh, you know, apply for career counseling, but some career counselors, you know, some of them were just like, what, you know, I would, you know, advertises for getting into Ashoka. I mean, I mentioned about, you know, I mentioned about that I want to do something in liberal arts. And while I, yes, I do agree that Kashoka is the best for liberal arts in the country. It was almost as if she just gave me, you know, one hour of um, just, you know, one hour lecture of, you know, that go to Ashoka. Ashoka is good. These are the packages. Go to Ashoka. Whereas that is not the answer I was probably looking for. So, yes, if you could answer, sir, and my question too. Yeah. So you see, um, if there is a problem, then there are people who are trying to offer solutions. So at least I'm glad that I'm on that side of the, of the uh, setup for now. So what am I doing? And I've sent a look, quite a few links on this. See, I know that this problem exists. By the way, Shayan, the person whom you spoke to is essentially an admissions counselor for Ashoka. And a lot of admissions counselors call themselves career counselors because people feel then more inclined to going towards them. It's, right, it's, understood. It's all a part of trying to attract students and then selling a course to them. Hmm. So why do we do that? Why do people do that? We do that because then the focus is admissions and the course and whatever remuneration that generates for the counselor there. Hmm. True career counseling when it's done by a psychologist should be centered on you, on the student, on the context and the needs at that point in time of the student, the course college comes second, much later. So Shine, just like when you go in search of a product, a gadget, a service, you do your due diligence to understand as to who are you going to? What is their expertise? And will they be able to provide the service that I want? I recommend that parents also go. Students also do this. Because if you don't do that, then the service that you're asking for and the service that person is giving is not matched. And this is a challenge that I face, by the way. Because a lot of people come to me and they say, Yahan pe admission kara do. I face the reverse challenge. And I say, no, no, I don't do admissions. I focus on helping the student understand what they want to do and how. And then they are a little confused. So yes, there is noise in the market. And 
this noise can only be reduced by people speaking up so i'm trying i have this book i've sent the url here the first one is on amazon.in it's an ebook and uh, it's all about uh, helping children find joy and alignment in careers and life now the reason i'm sharing this is because as an individual we need to do the best we can so i can speak i can do sessions i can talk to people but then i have to put as much as possible out in the you know for people to be able to see so here's a book if you have kindle unlimited you can see it for free otherwise it's 160 on amazon.com it's available and the indian print version should be out pretty soon so i think in a day or two that will also be out i can send out the link please spread the message make people aware because currently we are in a situation wherein people like me are trying to spread awareness about what career counseling can do and what the genesis should be and what the focus should be now there are a lot of people whenever any profession grows there'll be people who try to do it with the principles and then there will be those who will see that okay this is growing let me cash in on it the only thing i can do from here is to try and be out there make myself more visible and try and reach out to as many people as possible right chaim so <laughs> that's what and even to answer the professor i would say what happens with colleges also is that many educational institutions like let me share an example i actually try to tie up with two or three educational institutions in the beginning because i felt you know it's easy you can reach out to many students but they didn't want to tie up with me because i wasn't selling their course i think that answers so coming back if an institution or a person is serving what that profession is meant to do it's easy to align it's easy to guide but what happens is there are these other parameters that start coming into play and then they pollute the process so that's the reason why i do it individually why i do it in my own space and time and i take on students parents professionals who feel that this is the service they want they are not looking at me to build their profile get them internships and get them admissions in colleges abroad or in india okay so yes it is a challenge we have different people in the beginning even i used to wonder ki how do i keep answering people who tell me yaar admission kara do and then they tell me aap tuition coaching bhi kara do and i'm like yeah you know how do you expect me to coach you for a particular entrance exam it's not even my expertise so yes there is noise in the education system but it's our joint responsibility shyam and even to the professor that we make choices out of our awareness and choose things that make sense to us because if you don't do it then who will now that you mention it i realize that i've never actually attended a real career counseling session in my life because all the career counseling sessions that i have ever attended before this in my school were only you know various universities coming to our school and selling their courses and you know acha tumne humanities li hai to tum social work kar lo tum political science pad lo ye university hai ye course hai scholarship bhi mil jayega and you know i mean i was in 10th grade so obviously of all of that looks very appealing but uh, thinking back on that you know i now realize that um, it wasn't career counseling after it was just you know various universities trying to sell what they wanted to so my you know one of the things that so like i never per se have ever had to you know i never felt the need per se to you know take up career counseling because i personally i was very clear about what i want to do but you know what happened is that once you're in that transition phase between school and college you have a lot of free time in your hands and not only for yourself people around you are telling you you know you can do this you can do that and you know you can try this out and try that out so that kind of led to a situation where i was feeling very confused that you know i had a plan and suddenly you know people are presenting so many you know appealing opportunities in front of me now i feel like i am at the crossroads and what should i do then so that becomes an issue so could you give uh, like you know should i like stick to what i want to do and what i've always believed in or should i you know go ahead and explore new opportunities 
So firstly, list down everything that you wanted to do. Like if a career in political science or a course in political science is what you had mentioned, list it out and list down why you want to do it. Hmm. Then when somebody else is telling you, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Let me tell you there are over a thousand different careers. So you can listen to a thousand different people, but that's not advisable because you'll get confused. But out of those thousand voices, are there voices that resonate with you or make you want to think? Put those right, down. Right, ma'am. Yeah. Put those down. Then go research what is that career about. Stick to a few. Don't spread yourself thin. And this is the problem that students are facing. There are so many institutions and so many courses that are being marketed that overwhelm is happening. And we don't know what to choose. And that's why I'm saying to choose, always start from within. What do you want? And then your shortlist is quite easy. Right, ma'am. Understood. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Thank you for your question. And best, best wishes for everything that you do, Shine. It was nice. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma Thank, you. Ma Thank you. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Ramita says, if we enjoy working, we usually don't keep watch of time. But long hours of work cause health problems. When health is down, it causes frustration. How should this be handled? Yes, of course, Ramita. I mean, everything has to be done, keeping your health in mind. So when you're working for long hours, I think a certain amount of health and discipline is needed in life. And that goes without saying, even if you're working in the best job, or something that you really enjoy, if you decide to neglect your diet or your exercise or your sleep, I mean, our body is a machine, it's God gifted, let's, let's take care of it. So yes, we have to take care of our bodies, even if we are in a job that we really enjoy. I mean, please don't neglect, because I'll tell you why, if not anything else, don't you want to be doing this job for many years to come? So at least for that reason, please give enough attention and enough love to your body and make sure that your health is like perfect. So if you need to take a break for a few days, please take it. I think that's well worth it. Yeah. I hope that helps, Ramita. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Thanks, Ramita. Okay. We have Meetu who says, thank you, Meetu. It's extremely important that parents are supportive and allow their child to experience various learning opportunities to make up their minds and where would they fit best and live a purposeful life. Yes, exposure is important. Reading is important. Openness is important. So for instance, um, if a child wants to learn, say, gymnastics, and if there is a facility close by, if the parent says that I don't want them to learn gymnastics because of other reasons, then you see the exposure that we are providing may not be aligned with what the kid wants. So either you have reasons for that. For instance, some years back, many people wouldn't let their daughters learn dance because they didn't want their daughters to become professional dancers. You see all the stigma associated with being a dancer. So yes, exposure is good. And exposing, exposing the child to what the child wants to learn is good. Because otherwise, I have also seen the other side, which I fear is that parents take children to many, many different hobby classes in the hope that they'll find something that they'll excel at, which may be right. But if that turns into fatigue or this competition, wherein you are not really actually enjoying what you're learning, so you go to hone a hobby or a talent, and then that also turns into a competition or a stress then it takes away from that joy. So finding that right balance and that balance will be very different. For instance, I have neighbors and their children are very happy doing tuitions and talent classes every day. But if I do that with my kids, they're not going to like it. So each one drums to a different beat or rhythm also. So we have to give exposure to the point wherein we feel that, okay, this is working for us. And there is an experimentation, there is an awareness that you can see. Your body will tell you, your mood will tell you, your joy will tell you. Just listen, just listen to the voice within and then see what else is available outside. But yes, please give exposure. It's important. It, it really enriches. I mean, all of this for me, even talking to all of you is exposure for me. So 
I think for a child, that's so much more. Thank you. Yes, Shayan has raised his hand. Do you want to say something, Shayan? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to uh, just ask because now that, you know, I understand that, um, you know, uh, one thing that I faced uh, with my father at home is that sometimes our, our, like our career choices and what we want to do, they align. I mean, my father has never forced me to take up a career and, you know, it's always been my choice, whatever I've wanted to do. But like, for example, if, you know, like, you know, for example, the career that I want to see myself in is journalism, right? Okay. Hmm. So now what's happening is that while I understand that, you know, obviously, if you want to be a journalist, then, you know, my, you know, my father's like, great, be a journalist. But sometimes maybe I don't know, maybe it's just probably coming from a place of his unfulfilled aspirations that, you know, you know, if you become a journalist, then you can go to um, London and then you can work with the BBC and then, you know, you'll become a big journalist and then you can go to the center in Cardiff where, you know, you can become a big journalist and then you can work with CNN and Christian Amanpour can be your colleague. I'm like, I, I haven't even thought of that. I mean, all I've really thought about is I want to do political science right now. I mean, you know, and, and I've made it very clear to him from time and again that, you know, I let me first get to college, do my three years of graduation. And then after that, you know, it could change too. So, you know, then he becomes disappointed because, you know, my father always had a dream of settling in the UK, which is understandable. But what I don't, what I sometimes, you know, face a dilemma or, you know, feel conflicted sometimes with is that, you know, if, even if I do agree to what he's saying, will that be my dream or will that be his? So that is, you know, a bowl of sort of a conflict that I face at home. Shayan, do it if you feel that going there and doing all of this is what you want to do. Otherwise, please understand that your dad is trying to encourage you to be the best when he's saying that. It's right. coming from a place of good intent, good heart. Right. Yeah. What's happening with you is that because you're just starting, you're feeling this pressure. My God, I haven't even started. So that's where the disconnect is happening. So, you know, I feel that, of course, parents sometimes they see it from a very good place of we want to encourage the child and make them the best and help them grow. Sometimes it just becomes too overwhelming for the child to respond to those ambitious uh, you know, suggestions from the parent. So in that case, if you can just, just put a buffer around yourself and say, yeah, that sounds very interesting. I will look it up and I, you know, I will, uh, I like what you're saying, you know, say something because at the end of the day, at that point in time, he is encouraging you. And let's, let's face it, a lot of times parents do, and it's natural, do encourage children to try and fulfill desires desires that they couldn't fulfill by the way buy him that book and ask him to read it <laughs> all right <laughs> there are, I will definitely there are, do that. yeah there are, right. there are uh -huh. stories and chapters on how different students and all these dilemmas that parents go through that we as students also went through you know and it's all written it's barely like 100 140 pages but the whole point is to just help us all reflect pause and think back i mean it can be done over a weekend and that helps us all understand and say, Ki, am I trying my, making my child live my dream? Because if that's happening and if that's not your dream, then you're not going to be happy. And right. eventually even he won't be happy, by the way. Mm -hmm. So don't do it for him. Right. Hmm? Yeah, because you know what, as you mentioned, that would happen. Excuse me, Shayan. Uh, please excuse me. What you're saying is very interesting and a lot of it is of general use. But at the same time, uh, we are running short of time and uh, maybe others have something to say. So uh, while I mean, this discussion is very interesting and it's trying to sort of uh, get a little too, uh, you know, uh, monopolized by one dialogue. Sure. So what I would request uh, Vidya to do is to repeat the name of her book and then ask Aditi to see if there are some other questions in the chat box. And, uh, and then if Aditi herself wants to say something, let her do that. And then again, if there'll be time, we can come back to you. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the book is called Helping Our Teens Land on Their Feet. Let me, in fact, send a uh, share the screen once again and show you, uh, show you exactly what it looks like. Mm, yeah. 
So that's what the cover looks like. And they are basically tips and stories for parents and students can also read through them. You can read it together. I've sent the link, the Amazon link for the ebook on the chat box. And uh, I can send the link for the hard copy book to uh, Aditi later. Will that work? Yeah, because that's not yet available, but the ebook is available. And for those of you who have Kindle Unlimited, it's free. Just download it and read it. So it's exactly this, helping our teens land on their feet. And it's exactly this. It's tips and stories for parents who are really loving and who want to help their kids. And most of us are just there, actually. Yeah. And uh, OK, one more thing I want to cover. There are lots of times wherein people ask me, how do we make different careers? And uh, what is the life of a professional? So there is a YouTube channel which I have in which I have crafted videos and interviewed people who thrived in careers in photography, dance, um, people who started their entrepreneurial journey post 40 years and now are listed in the New York Stock Exchange. So in the past five, six years, they've grown that much. And architecture and of course, cybersecurity. The main point for me doing all of this is that it's not just enough to tell people that you can do this career. It's also important to show what the life of that professional feels like. So for those of you who are interested in this, please do go subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm sharing the link once again here. And every now and then I will be uh, uploading videos. And what is already there, just go look it up because all of these videos are there and they're for general consumption. And I'd really, I mean, I really want to reach out exactly to answer Cheyenne's and the professor's point. I want to reach out because I think this is something that we need to do. So it's a YouTube slash Life Vidya, easy to remember. Please go subscribe. And uh, yeah, this is uh, all of the material and the information that I'm trying to create so that I can serve what I want to do. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I was also wondering if you can uh, share your email ID in the chat box. So maybe if Shine wants to take this conversation ahead or write to you in any such case, so he can or any other participant can also do that as well. Sure. If there's any pending conversation. Yeah, so that's Dr. Thoughts Revitya at hotmail.com. Thank you. Thank you and so much. As of now, there are uh, no more questions in the chat box. So I think maybe we can just uh, close the session and uh, just one quick announcement about the next session. Next talk will be on uh, myths and facts about common childhood problem. We will have uh, another doctor, Dr. Smriti Rotagi, talking about the childhood problems from a medical perspective as well as a parent perspective. So that will be our next talk and I'll be sharing the email with all of you later in the week. So that was one announcement. and. Uh, Thank you everyone for joining in today. And Dr. Bijlani, if you would like to say some closing words for the session. Yeah, thank you, Aditi. Uh, Srivita has been visiting Shirobindo Ashram Delhi branch for several years, off and on. But uh, during the last few months, she has become a regular visitor, mostly in the Sunday satsangs at 10 in the morning. And uh, she got so involved in it that uh, I felt that um, she was just waiting for the right time to come. And when the time came, she took to Shirobindo and the mother's teachings as a fish takes to water. And I'm sure that is further helping her refine the work that she's doing. Uh, she has followed this up with a one week camp in one of our hill centers in uh, near Nanital at Van Nevas uh, with Dr. Alok Pandey, who's a psychiatrist by qualification, but otherwise a spiritual seeker uh, for a long time. So she has done that also. Now, some of the comments that uh, I occurred to me, well, you know, one of the important things that most important things that she uh, may, uh, sort of take home messages which we can call of the session is that all the seven factors that she listed, which influence her career's choice are all outside the person, outside the individual. So the individual has to do something for the next 30 to 40 years. And yet we are hardly bringing the individual into uh, the picture without factoring in the unique characteristics of the individual. There are so many pressures from so many directions. And uh, are, that is what ends up determining what he uh, will be doing. And therefore, it's not surprising that at various stages, sometimes uh, 
as an undergraduate and sometimes even as late as having been in a career for uh, 10 or 20 years, the person finds that uh, the choice that the person made was not the right choice. And this is becoming more and more common because uh, now with this substantial increase in the middle class, what's happening is that the economic necessities uh, have been uh, overshadowed by other psychological necessities. And the result is that uh, now people have the luxury of uh, uh, not using the education that they got in college, doing something else, or shifting from one career to another uh, after having been in it for 10 or 20 years. So all these luxuries have become available, which is good. But at the same time, that should not be the reason why we deliberately make a mistake. From the spiritual point of view, no matter what you end up doing, will provide you opportunities for spiritual growth. But that doesn't mean that we end up having those situations, those circumstances, which it may be possible to use for spiritual growth, but are not the best in keeping with, of, with our temperament. Because traditionally also we have accepted that what we should be doing should be in keeping with our swabhava and swadharma. Swabhava, our unique temperament, in short, and swadharma, our unique circumstances in life. So these are the two basic things that should be guiding us. So once we may use these as our guides, then we end up doing something. We are likely to enjoy it. But uh, apart from that, uh, what also becomes the necessary is that if we have found something which uh, we are finding reasonably uh, satisfying, uh, we also realize that in whatever we do, everything that we do in it will not be equally satisfying or will not be uh, completely satisfying. So, uh, you know, you have to take... Uh, uh, they take everything with a uh, sort of this mitha and khatta, you know, as they say, the sweet and the sour, they come together as a package. So first we try to select what uh, we are really good at, what we really like, and then we try to like and be good at what we end up doing. Both are important. And uh, if we uh, try to like and uh, become good at what we are doing, and do it in the spirit of karma yoga, then as the mother has said, this may still end up being our temporary occupation. And if we handle our temporary occupation with, with, full, with full sincerity and dedication, we are sure to one day find our inner colleague, which may be more satisfying. So it's not that the shift is not, uh, or a transition is something which is necessarily bad in itself. But at the same time, one should make a good beginning and uh, not be guided by all those factors which are actually outside the individual. And one of the points that was made was uh, by Dr. Prishikesh Acharya that uh, counseling services are very difficult to come by and they are much needed. The supply uh, is uh, far less than the need. So one of the ways one can make it up is by reaching out to more people through talks like this and even more effectively through books like the one that Sri Vidya has written. Because uh, that way you can multiply your reach, you can reach much larger number of people. So these are some of the things which occurred to me as it was going on. And one very interesting question from which one can draw actually a very negative corollary was that if we do something that uh, uh, we really like, we are likely to work extremely hard and uh, that may spoil our health. And uh, from that a corollary could be that we should choose something which we don't like so that we don't work very hard and preserve our health. Somehow, if something is true, the converse is not necessarily true. If we do end up doing something that we don't like, we may work less, but then that will not necessarily make us more healthy. We'll be under stress. And in this is one field in which as a doctor, I can say, mind dominates matter. So if you're not happy doing what you're doing, you're likely to more likely to have ill health. Up to a point, hard work never killed anybody. That is true. But at the same time, as Vidya said, if for no other reason, at least for the reason that if you really enjoy what you are doing, do get absorbed in it, but not to the extent that you forget to take care of your body. If for no other reason, at least for the fact that you want to do it for 30 or 40 years of your life, and you will not be able to do it if your health is ruined. So don't ruin your health. Uh, you'll have much longer time available to do what you really enjoy doing if you to continue to take care of this body, which is a gift that we have received from God. And the least that is expected is that uh, if we have been given some equipment to look after as managers, we take good care of the machinery that we have. We keep it clean, well-oiled, lubricated, and take good care of it. So 
taking good care of the body is not just required for pragmatic reasons because we don't want to be ill, because we don't want to suffer. It is also a sacred duty. So with uh, these few words, I would like to stop and uh, again hand over to Aditi or Vidya if they have some afterthoughts to share. Thank you so much, Dr. Bijlani, for your enlightening words and uh, for holding these sessions week after week. I think uh, I owe a lot of gratitude for all of these. Thank you so much. And thank you, Aditi, for being there and for anchoring it and for all the effort that you put in. And uh, a lot of thanks to all the participants who came in today and stayed on. We were short, but thank you so much. All right. Aditi, thanks. you want to say anything? No, just a lot of gratitude to offer for the space. So thank you, everyone. Maybe we can just end with a few seconds of silence to just take in all that what we have discussed. All right, thank you everyone. See you next week. Namaste.